First up, we've got Ricky Hatton versus Manny Pacquiao. This was a brutal knockout. And before I break it down for you, here it is. Oh yeah, that was that was a nasty punch, and you know? it really sad me because I was a huge Ricky Hatton fan at the time. What what Pacquiao did there in his southpaw stance, I'm going to show you in orthodox, was he put his lead hand out, flicked his lead hand out a couple of times as he moved forward, and as he did that the last time, he like, like put the lead hand out, but he leaned back. And when you're putting your lead hand out and leaning back. You're putting your weight to your back foot, which is really helping you load up that big back hand. And because he's doing it at the same time, whoom, whoom, the speed he can generate from that is, is sickening, as we just seen there. So he's here, he's here, he throws that out and leans back at the same time, which is so hard to do, but that's generating the power into the punch. Oh, and here it is one more time. Like this since he was at 130 pounds. Arthur Abraham versus Jermaine Taylor. What a mad knockout this one was. Here it is. So if you notice what he did there, it was brilliant. He stepped in with a long lead hook. Got Jermaine Taylor's hands to come up together like that. And Jermaine was ex wasn't expecting the right hand to go straight through the middle, but that's what he did. So he stepped with the hook, boom, and then blasted that right hand in. The momentum of his movement with that step generated so much power to be able to knock out his opponent. And it looked like this. Here it is again. Set up by a wide left hook. And the right was right down the I'm moving on to number three is Lennox Lewis versus Hasim Rahman. I hope I pronounced that right. And what a knockout this was. And it was similar to the Arthur Abraham knockout where he stepped in to get that power, but then he whacked in that right hand. Here's the knockout here. They're telling him not to counter punch. So if you noticed, he did that big step, but this time, rather than going straight through the middle, he come all the way around the side and he hit uh, Hassan straight on the chin. And because of his stepping as he's moving, you know, that's where he generated all the power. And it looked like this. Oh, you can hear the power there. I can feel it in my hands. I'm gonna do it one more time. Let's watch it again. He could have done the holy field if he had decided to be more aggressive. Moving on to number four, Tommy Hearns versus Roberto Duran. Whoa, what an error these guys were fighting in. And Tommy Hearns was like 6'1", 6'2", and he was known for his power. Even though he was a lot taller and thinner than his opponents, he knew how to generate the power in the punch. And when he knocked uh, Roberto Duran out, whoa, what a punch this was. Here it is. And what he's doing here, he's kind of touching, touching with the lead hand as he's moving forward. Then he throws a right hand. It kind of looks like it's going to be a straight right hand. But I've noticed watching a lot of Tommy Earns, he kind of comes over and like, I kind of, I'm not going to call it a slap it in, but it's like he hooks it in and he hits Duran on the chin. And it looks like this. So he's here, he's here, and then he's moving. Boom! and it's coming down, and he's coming down and all the way around. You see, he's punching through the target. Again, he's here. Woo! Nice punch. Let's watch it again. I know where he is. Now uh, here's the cruncher. There it is. Moving on to number five. Manny Pacquiao versus Marquez, and this was one of the most shocking knockouts I think I've ever seen or ever can remember when Manny Pacquiao got put to sleep on the ground it was for me it was a, it was a sad moment in boxing because I love I love Pacquiao but what a punch this was for Marquez wow an overhand right here it is now gets his feet back and tries to roar back to nail Pacquiao with the right hand oh! whoa what a knockout that was so how did he do it how did he generate that power in his punch well it was a perfect overhand right and he took his head off the center line when he did it and he really stepped with it and done his full body weight behind that punch and i've done a full video on talking about the overhand right and this is a perfect example of how to throw it correctly so he's here and he kind of steps takes his head off the line and that right hand comes over the top of his hands that's why it's overhand right so it goes over his hands and hits him straight on the chin and it looks like this oh serious here it is again. Since Sergio 
Martinez knocked out Paul Williams on November 20. Carl Froch versus George Groves. And Carl Froch is someone that I've done lots of sparring with and a high level fighter. Real tough guy, but as well could punch really hard. George Groves, a guy who I was on the England boxing team with, another world class fighter. And they had a couple of great fights. And the way the last fight ended was a, uh, yeah, it was by this punch right here. The better of it when they meet in the center of the ring now. Oh, good and right down goes. And as you see in there, this was pretty similar to the Lennox Lewis knockout that I showed earlier on, where he's done the step with the hook and come around with the right hook slash right straight. So we've seen a little pattern here, right? When people are stepping and punching, it's just showing you how much power they're getting behind the punch. And that is, and I keep seeing it, because of they're getting the momentum of their body weight behind the punch. You know, if you do that fast and explode, explode when you're doing it, the power is going to be ridiculous. So, Carl Froch, he did it. He put that big, long left hook out. As he did that, he's moving forward, boom, blasting that right hand. It was a lot better than that one there. But it looked like this. <laughs> Yeah, and I can just feel, and you can see the bag there, how much power is behind that punch. Getting hit on the chin by one of them from someone like Carl Froch, doesn't matter who you are, you are going to sleep. Here it is one more time. As Groves was at rest for a few moments after this right hand. What a shot. Arturo Gatti versus Joey Gamache. If you haven't seen much of Arturo Gatti fighting, I recommend you watch him. He's one of the most exciting fighters of all time, I would say. Especially his fight when he fought Mickey Ward. Anyway, he's a knockout for you, uh, which is fantastic. It's not a one-punch knockout. It's kind of a three, four-punch knockout, but it's a good one. He also looks so much bigger than he does. Yeah, I mean, he's got a 15-pound weight advantage. Right? Every time he lands a shot, it's... So as you see in there, it was the first punch that he threw before he landed the combination that done a lot of damage. He threw a right hook. So that's hurt his opponent there. And then what he's done, he stepped in with an uppercut, left hook, right hook. Now them punches there, when you're turning into them, whap, 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 getting your body weight behind them, you're getting so much power. Now, if you're hitting someone in the chin with these three punches, yeah, it's good night. And the accuracy of these punches was fantastic. So the first punch that he hurt him with was that right hook, boom, which is a hard punch to land when you throw it on its own. But then inside it was a ba ba ba. Ooh, yeah, did you see that when I turned my hips, turning my feet, transferring the weight, the power that I get into it? Ooh, lovely, here it is again. Right uppercut, and you see why we were worried about Sergio Martinez versus Paul Williams. This is one of the most brutalist knockouts on this full of video. Sergio Martinez is a great southpaw, and yeah, you'll see this punch right here. Ooh, it's brutal. And as you've seen there, what he was doing, he was stepping back, stepping back, stepping back. As Paul Williams was coming on, he took his head off that line, stepped across, boom, and threw in that big overhand left, hit him straight on the chin. How we had success with that, I think, is because Paul Williams' eyes is on his eyes. And on my overhand right video, I explain this. It's where, you know, if you're looking at me and I'm stepping over here, your eyes are following my eyes and you're not following my hands. So if I'm stepping over here and your eyes is following me, they're not seeing this one, whoom, and then that comes over the top there. And that's exactly what he'd done. So he got so much power in it. So he was moving back, moving back, moving back. As you move forward, whoom, step over and blast it in. And when you're doing this, whoom, you're getting so much power in the punch. Here it is one more time. We're gonna take a look at how it ends. Yeah. Williams throws a left, but Martinez beats him with a the left. Shot punch, yeah, I thought it was a right hook. Shot. Number nine is such a spectacular knockout. Now, what did I add this one on here? Because it's very rare that you see someone get knocked out or someone knock someone out with a lead uppercut. This was Pavekin against Dylan White. Oh, Ooh, what a brutal knockout. And as you see in there, he kind of dipped and brought that hand straight up, hitting him straight on the chin. I think this is, might be the only lead uppercut knockout I've ever seen in boxing. I don't know, if you've seen one, let me know in the comments below. So yeah, he dipped, whoom, and threw that up a lot better than that one. Dipped, whoom, 
and threw it up. It's hard to throw it in the bag, but if you're on a ball like that one, you can do it. Here it is one more time. You know about the caliber of fighter Povetkin is, but you look like an old aging fighter there. But wow, he rolled back the clock for you. Okay, the final one. This is the guy who knocked me down. It was in the sparring session in Ireland, and he knocked me down with the right hook. So here it is. Andy Lee is the guy who knocked me down. He knocked me down with a right hook. He's a tall southpaw, and you'll see the exact shot that he knocked me down with here. Another right hand lands. Body shot almost knocks Lee through the ropes. Jackson's power is simply oh. devastating Lee. And there's a perfect right hand counter off the ropes. And what an unbelievable knockout that was. I managed to get up from it and, you know, I didn't continue the spa. The spa was over. It was the last round that we did, but it did hurt me bad and it concussed us. Such a good shot. And he generated so much power in that by turning back and, like, turning into it, you know. And if you notice on that knockout, he didn't really rotate that much. But what I think he does to get that power is lean back. Because when you're leaning back, when you're throwing that hook, you're getting the weight of the movement in the punch, which is hard to explain. But when you do it, you'll feel it. So if I'm here and I throw it and lean back at the same time, you can see the power there. Yeah, and I'm rotating as well, the body into it. Here it is one more time. Didn't bother was it with a count as Jackson lay face down. Guys, if you want to learn about body punching, watch this video next where I give you the ultimate guide to be able to punch really good body punches. Click here and check it out.